Okay, the full study. As we're up to number 56. Fools and still in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 14, verse 1. Proverbs is a mainstay of the fool on how not to be foolish. Bible does not want us, God does not want us to be foolish. And yet, when you go into a study like this, how many times are we? How many times have we had to or should confess our sins of foolishness and being a fool? I mean, fools will lose rewards. It'll be wood, hay, or stubble turned to ashes at the judgment seat of Christ. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish pluck it down with her hands. Now, wise is not foolish, and foolish is not wise. This is one of them verses. It's a contra. It's showing the bad with the good, the right with the wrong. And wise is never connected with fool. It could be a wife or just a woman, because it doesn't say wife. It just says woman. It could be any female of a house destroys a house is a foolish woman. She will cause problems. She will cause trouble. She will be a hindrance to the family, the people of the house, and that's a fool. And women, without classification of wife or daughter, every wise woman, singular, buildeth her house. But the foolish woman with the context of, of what we already read there's a wise woman there's a foolish one plucking it down with her she destroys it she plucks she takes the hair there 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 she takes the part here she it's not utter destruction at first but it's just pulling away I do this i'm gonna nag here i'm gonna nag there i'm gonna get upset here i'm gonna do this here i'm not gonna listen there i'm not gonna do that here and this foolishness foolishness in the house falls now the wise woman look at the contract here she builds the house she, she starts with the foundation the woman uh, proverbs chapter 31 the virtuous woman builds she puts a brick here. She puts a windowsill here. She puts a door frame here. She puts a tile here. She puts the main stray of a house in the house in the end for her is built. But for the foolish woman, the end of the house is destruction. And Jesus said in, in the, the Gospels, and I'm not going to quote it verbatim, but he says, a man that is... To the word of God and obeys what Jesus Christ said. Builds his house on a foundation and the storms come and the wind blows and the house remains. But a man that will not listen to the word of God will build his house upon sand. And when the storms come, the same storm, the wind, the rain, utter destruction. So with the parable of Jesus Christ and what we read in Proverbs 14 verse 1. The wise woman adheres to the word of God. The foolish woman does not adhere to what Jesus says and its destruction. Down to bring down. Decay. Decay is, is the female. Again, like I said, thou a man build a house upon the rock by the word of God. Proverbs 14, verse 3. Don't go very far to the next one. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. But the lips of the wise shall preserve it. Again, here's that wise and there's that fool. As reading my Bible, as one, thing, one thing about this study I did forget to include. The word folly. F-O-L-L-Y. And I see that with, with King Saul right now. Folly. And I apologize for not including that word because that is foolishness. So, pride brings words of foolishness. A rod is used for smiting in the Bible. It's a rod of correction, especially in the book of Proverbs. It's made for the behind of those who will not adhere to children that are grown in your house. It's the child rearing. And to hit and cause wounds. Now the wise lips preserve the foolish mouth decays. Like we looked at that woman, verse 1. There's a woman that builds up her house wisdom. And there's wisdom of a mouth that can help people grow. 
And yet there, there is one that can destroy a house, and there is the lips of foolish that can destroy. Preserve is to keep up for later. The fool is in his pride. He is proud when he damages other people with his mouth. It's a sin. Let's look at that verse again. In the mouth of the foolish is the rod of pride. There is never any pride found with God in Jesus Christ. God's pride is, well done, thou good and faithful servant. A man's pride, we're number one, we're number one, we're the best, rah, 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 rah. God bless America, man in America. That's pride. And that's a sin. That's foolishness. And his mouth ought to get a rod. The rod of pride brings about from God correction. Pride goes before a fall. But the wise, he will preserve them. He puts up for later. And, and when you put up preserves later, it's something you don't use preserves right away. You may, you may not. You say, you know, I got excess out of garden. I'm going to preserve these for the winter and all that. So it, it would be a proper time for the mouth to, you know what? It's not right right now to say it. It's not the proper time. Later. That's what, that's wisdom. Proverbs 14, 7. Go from the presence of a fool-ish man. Not from a fool, but from a foolish man. So, it's not here a, a, a fool as a noun. The person. Fool is an adjective. It's describing the man. And when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. So when you come across a fool, a man who's acting foolish, the Bible says get away from him. Don't laugh at him. Don't enjoy their company. Don't fellowship with them. Get away. And, and that's a do Bible doctrine today. Many Christians don't like, oh, I'm not going to get away. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to want to have fellowship. I want to have. And then you destroy yourselves. And you'll be found at loss at the judgment seat of Christ when somebody like me comes across with the truth. The Bible says when a man acts foolish, go from the presence of a foolish man. And when you listen to him, and when he speaks of nothing knowledgeable, don't listen and don't stay around with him. So again, go from the presence of a foolish man. If he's foolish, go. Leave him. Depart. Say bye. Some people find that hard to do. When thou perceivest not in him, in him, the man, the lips of knowledge, his words will declare his foolishness. His mouth will declare, hey, I'm being foolish. You need to leave. Let a man talk and he'll bury himself. Proverbs 14 a The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. But the folly, this one follows, right? we didn't do folly, I apologize. But folly falls right along. The folly of fools, plural, is deceit. So we got prudence, careful, looking out. Observing, studying, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Prudence is not fool, and fools are not prudent. A wisdom of the prudent, so wisdom comes with prudence, and we've already looked at wisdom does not come with foolish. So what comes with foolish? Folly. As wisdom and prudence together, you get folly and fool. A prudent man will help you understand the way. A prudent man will show you the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus Christ. The follies of fool is deceit will say, do these beads. Give us money. You have to sell this. You have to do that. You got to do this. This is works. That works. Join us. Go there. Be that. Do this. The deceit of fools is religion. The deceit 
of fools would be the, the public school system on the things that they teach are not going to help you in a way of anything. Now, where math and stuff like that is taught and it would help you because you will need math. That's prudence and wisdom. But oh, probably the nonsense that goes on in the school systems today behind the closed, secure, barred doors of the gates and the walls and everything that you can't get into them. I mean, such ridiculous things as, as deceit would be, oh, you know, there's more than male and female. And sodomites, you know, they're, they're, they're people too. That's deceit. That's where God teaches opposite. So if fool's ways are plain deceit, would you follow a person who had deceit? Would you have company with a person who had deceit? Chapter 14, verse 7. Fool. Fools deceive. Fools are wolves in sheep's clothing. Deceit. Deceit. Proverbs 14, 9. We're not going to get out of this chapter, are we? Fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. So here again, what do we got? We got fools. What's the counter to fools? Righteous. Are you a saved fool? You're not righteous. You can't be both. You cannot have foolishness and righteousness. Proverbs clearly puts that extinction between fools and wisdom. Prudence and fools. And now we got righteous against the fool. Fools mock at sin. Sin is a joke to them. Something they think they are teasing God. They boast about the sex, drinking, and partying. But they are fools. Ever listen to people and their foolish weekend stories of sinning and read the wall posts on Facebook? Fools. A righteous man will go to God with a repentant heart, repenting of what they have done, and trying to gain the favor of God and trying to please Him by putting their sins under the blood of Jesus Christ. To cleanse them so they can be used as a clean vessel of God. Fools are, are ravishing in their filth. I always say, for the eyes of God, I'd rather be a clean chamber pot for God. Than a gold and silver spoon found in a sewer. What's God going to use? I mean, what, what is a chamber pot? Look it up. But if you're a gold or silver spoon and you've been sitting in a sewer, are you going to be used? That's foolish. Fools think joke is, oh, they think joke is entertaining. Fools would be a great here. Fools make a mock at sin. When a man gets up on the stage and comedy about sins and sinning, and sinners and sin and makes you know laugh ha 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 would it be at arena would it be in a theater would it be at a at a uh, uh wherever a comedian will perform or even in the church house when you mock sin and we're going against the righteous mentioned in this verse when you are a Christian and you mock sin, you are a fool and you need to repent. Proverbs 14, 16. Proverbs 14, 16. Well, in this chapter. Proverbs 14, 16. A wise man feareth Okay, so what do you think we're going to look at now? And departeth from evil. All right, wise man fears and he departs from evil. Who do you think the next person we're going to look at? But the fool rageth and is confident. What's that rageth? Just do it. 
I can do what I want. Go for it. Go for the gusto. A fool will not depart from evil, but will get angry when rebuked or even warned. He remains in his own confidence that he is safe or okay. Now the wise man versus the fool again, he departs from evil. He he won't have anything to do with it. He fears. He fears that sin will have a consequence on his body and his life and others, and he does not want to do it. A fool just does it and is confident when what he does wrong against the wise man. A fool is somebody who thinks, I am pleasing to God. I am pleasing to myself. I am pleasing to others. And we read about chapter, chapter 14, verse 1. Here was a foolish woman. I'm doing so great. And she's destroying her house. According to Proverbs 14, 7, we are to leave his company. So the fact is, with the fool, if we do what we're supposed to do, he is losing the fellowship of people who want to do right. And in his mouth is a great pride that God is going to use a rod against. And he's not wise. Proverbs 14, 17. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hatred. Now, this is not a controversy. This is a fool and then a, a wicked man. So the fool here in chapter uh, 14, verse 17, is he is engrossed together with, well, let's read it, let's read it again. He is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hatred. So here a fool is not going contra of a wise man. It's a foolish man and a wicked man. So foolish equals wickedness. Foolish never equals wisdom. Foolish never equals pro uh, uh, pr prudence in the book of Proverbs. So soon angry. This is a man that blows up. He's quick to ang anger. He won't get himself with any anger management. Ephesians 4.16. Ephesians 4.16. Now, is it wrong? To, is it a sin to get angry? Ephesians 4.16. Look at scriptures. Why well, give you my personal, pit, my personal opinion? Uh, what did I say? Ephesians 4.16. That's yes, not it. For, uh, Ephesians 4.26. Be angry. Ooh. Wow. Okay. I can do that. <laughs> Is that not a verse right there? Be angry. All right. I'm, so I'm going to go out and be angry. But we're not finished with the verse. But let's look at what we are right now. It says, he that's soon angry deals foolishly. Be angry. Well, that's kind of foolish. And the Bible says, and sin not. There is a, a, an attitude God has given to man to be angry. But don't sin. Like I said before, uh, all my lessons, I am angry with the Catholic Church. For the hell damnation they do to people who some were really trying to do right. Some, they want to be deceived. But the millions and not billions of people around this world today that are involved in the Catholic Church. And the heresy and the fallacy that they teach that goes against the Bible. All weight, shape, and form. I'm mad at that. I'm not mad at Catholics. I'll preach. I'll teach. I'll work with, with the Bible with a Catholic. Now, where would the sin be? I go burn the Catholic Church down. I go knock over their idols. I go knock the heads off the statues of Mary. I go, you know, disrespect 
the offices of the Catholic Church. Now, I, you know, listen, I've dealt with Catholic priests before in the public, and I, you know, I'll say something like, you know, you're not worthy to be called a father. I'll say something, you know, how dare you deceive the people under your parish? By the way, why is it called parish when Christ is life? You know, so, well, I, you know, I wouldn't go as far as, you know, I believe it was Martin Luther said, you're hellish father. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. So I've been known to do things like that. I wouldn't destroy them. I witnessed to them. I'd be angry at the, organiza the organization. And the Bible says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So be angry. Don't sin. And there's wrath. Before you go to bed, deal with it. Get over it. I need to mark that as 26. First step. A fool does not know how to handle anger, and thus he sins. We had an episode Saturday with the police. I could have been angry, but man, you know, just listen to him and respectfully say, Officer, okay, I understand your point of view, and this is our point of view. If it's right, we're, we're going to do it. If it's wrong, we're not going to do it. And we end up with about 30, 40, maybe an hour just having a good old time with the police officer. Where it was called to go against us, and we could have hang, hanged her out angrily and got, you know, handcuffed and put in jail, but that's, that's not going to do nothing. Now, maybe my action is the first time that cop broke, I said, This is a sidewalk, this is a public policy. Yeah, I'm going to stress it right out. Because that's why they were called, because we were on that side. You know, that's not, I'm just saying. But there's no sense of getting angry, but a fool just blows up i dealt with a fool one time at a job and it's like okay yeah i said just calm down the guy went into our even more rage well then just let your health deteriorate let yourself just die of heart disease and stuff like that you won't be that foolish over a little stupid little matter that guy was a fool and just to blow up and then you think about soon anger. When you get soon anger later on, if you've got any conscience, you've done a lot of deeds, you said a lot of things, you've been a lot of verbs of action. You may not be able to take it back later. Not wise. Uh, Proverbs 14.24. Proverbs 14.24. The crown of the wise is their riches. There's the wise. What do you think we're going to talk about now? But the foolishness of fools is folly. <laughs> Look at those three words. We got foolishness, fools, and folly. Again, I apologize. I shouldn't have put this study into fools. I can maybe add it later, but I don't know if that would do any. It may just ruin the study so far, but all right. So. The crown of the wise. Why? He gets a crown. He's got riches. And don't go running off. Oh, he's got gold, silver, and diamonds, and all that. I've got riches. I live in a, in, a, in a crappy city called Daytona Beach. Nothing really pleasant here. The world's famous beach. Whoopie doo. Oh. I. And hopefully, right now, I've got gold, silver, and precious stones right now waiting for me at Browns. If not, if I have not been faithful to God, if I have not done to God and I get wood, hay, or stubble, all my works. The Bible says I'm getting a mansion. And that's not good enough. I'm getting a street of gold of New Jerusalem. I'm getting walls that are garnished with all kinds of gemstones. I am going to be forever in glory before the God that created me, Jesus Christ who suffered and died for me, and the Holy Spirit that guided me. Listen, it's not a prayer of mine, but I mean, I try to avoid, I don't want to be homeless, but if I were to be homeless and have nothing, I've got great riches waiting for me in heaven. Glory to God. And I can boast. I boast about my riches of heaven. 
How do I do that? I go in the world and preach the gospel and say, if you're to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will get the same things I will get. The golden street, the, the cities of a garnish of gemstone, a brand new body, a sinless body, no more tears, no more sorrow, no more sin, no more agony. What riches God has given me through Jesus Christ. And you can have that too by proclaiming. That's why I want people to get saved. I don't want them to go to hell. I want them to gain all God has for them. But the foolish of fools is folly. So what's a fool? He's foolish. And what is, what is he? What is his character? Folly. That's it. There's no crown and there's no riches. A foolish Christian will walk in glory. And I can't describe it, but uh, just did whatever I wanted to do. I know I got saved. That was it. Didn't try to win anybody. They're not trying to do encourage anybody. And what we've seen so far, he's a discouragement to the lost and to the saved. Proverbs 14.33. Another. 64. 64 we've done so far. We're, we're going to stop at this one. We'll, we'll let this be chapter 14. But we started with 56. And let me do a little rough math here. Nine. We just done nine verses in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14. Can't do it in my head. One chapter that has 35 verses, and we did nine times. I don't know what the percentage of that is. I'm full. I guess Solomon does not want us to be a fool. I guess the Holy Spirit does not want us to be full. Proverbs 14.33 Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that has understanding. What do you think we're going to turn to now? But that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Fools per the Bible make themselves known. Per the Bible. A fool will broadcast his foolishness. Hello! Hi! I'm an idiot. And it may not be said like that. But that's what you do. A wisdom has in his heart understanding. But that which is in the midst of fools is made known. That. What? His stance. Who he is. What he is. Foolish. He speaks loud and clear. And the problem with that today is. America is a foolish nation. Without God. Without Jesus Christ. Without the Bible. Without proper learning. Of knowledge. Wisdom. And understanding. Of what the word of God has to say. The majority of Americans today, saved and lost, are foolish. They don't stand out. But the Bible-believing Christian that does and tries to do right, he stands out like a sore thumb. And God has warned us through the scriptures, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Woe to that. When the world is magnified through the church, that's calling evil good. And when the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel, oh, we don't, we don't, we, we let our light shine. That's calling good evil. And when you are involved in a ministry that the Bible proclaims, that the Bible says to do, that the Bible lifts up and exalts like Jesus Christ, and Christians look at you and say, like, what on earth is that you're doing? It's in the pages of the Bible. When people come up to me in a public ministry, which I street preach, and they say, that's not what Jesus would do. I say, you don't know, you never read the Bible. I had a guy yesterday. 
kind of against, you know, but not against you know, the Ford ministry, but just the uplifting of the voice as loud as I am. And, you, read, you know, I read through the book of Acts and we showed them a Bible verse yesterday. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. Fools. Hi, I'm a fool. I'll just have a big old sign. Fool. And remember the early studies we, uh, we spoke about with correction? Remember what we talked about the stocks? Where there was a public, the public green or a public main street where there were people. They had these, this wooden block that was set up about the height of people. And they would put their hands in one hole and the other hand in the other hole. And they put their head in the middle hole. They they clamp it down and lock it. And people would say, oh, there, there's a fool. There's a criminal. And they sometimes they were battered with eggs. They were battered with old lettuce. were battered. I mean, I, I read with dead cats and stuff like that. That's a pro public correction. And we've already seen a correction about the fool. That's a statement to say, hey, I'm foolish. I'm a criminal. Churches are coming like, hey, look at us. We're worldly. How their world we are. They love us. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, you're making God sick. That ought not to be so. So how do we do on today's fools, Christians? Have we sinned? I have. I have not been the wise Christian I should be. I've fallen on many foolish ways. And when I started this study, I said, fools, I said, and you know what? I'm going to be completely honest with you. I didn't think I would fit this, this study. We just finished 64 fools. And I'm not going to tell you how many times I've been the fool of these, but not all 64. Thank God. But I've been a fool enough to be a sinner. Under the classification of what we read today. Fools, foolishness, and folly. And I am to repent. I am to confess my sins. Of foolishness. And I hope these studies. In, I don't know how many there have been so far. Like I said, we're 64 uh, verses right now. Get the other ones. Get them out free. Listen to them. Put them on your iPad, your your MP3 players. Put them seed. I give you all permission for the glory of God and Jesus Christ to grow as a Christian and to learn the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you're if you're lost, I give you all permission to take these videos and get them out. You get them out. Let God be lifted up. Say to a fellow Christian, hey, you know, this guy, he's doing a little study on fools. I thought it was interesting. I didn't realize. You know what? That guy admitted to being a fool, says he's going to confess his sins, which I do. And I found my own self to be foolish, didn't even realize by the scriptures. I want to get right with God. Hey, I love you. You're a brother and sister in Christ and Lord. I mean, I want you to listen to this. Never thought. I never heard such a message like this in a church. And I've been in church since 1987. Hope you grow. I give you permission to get these out. Send them out. How, whatever you do to get them out to everybody. Any country, any language, go ahead. And if you can put this in another language, go for it. I have enough problem with English. But let's look to God our Savior. Let's look to God our Creator. Let's please Him and let's look to God as, you know what? I've been a fool. I need help from the Lord. I need to confess it to the Lord. I need to get right with the Lord. 